Utosh UTS-15. Next generation of shotgun or a failed concept? I'm leaning more towards a failed concept, unfortunately. So what we're looking at today is a second generation Utosh UTS-15 shotgun. Um, UTS uh, is said to have two different sayings, either urban tactical shotgun or ultimate tactical shotgun. Uh, for reference purposes, I'm just going to call it the UTS. You guys personally, you can call it whatever pleases your heart. So what we're going to be going over is uh, positives and negatives of the shotgun. Uh, and then what we're going to go over is my personal experience I've had with this specific model, as well as certain ones that friends of mine have owned. Um, so we'll get it started. Uh, just as a reference point, this shotgun is a Generation 2. Uh, to my knowledge, there are three out there, possibly four. If anybody knows, please speak, please speak up um, and help out. And I've got exactly 2,000 rounds through this. So I've got exactly 20 flats of ammunition. And that's a sort of birdshot, buckshot, and slugs. Uh, the buckshot and slugs are all low, re like reduced recoil ammunition. So just so that's out there. So we'll get started. Um, we'll start with the positives. So some of the positives of this gun are its overall size being just under 30 inches, which is really nice for a shotgun. Um, and second thing I've got to say about it is its capacity. It's pretty hard to beat 15 rounds of 12 gauge ammunition. Now, we'll roll through here. Um, the thing I like a lot about this specific style shotgun over the KSG is its fire selector switch. Fire selector. It's magazine tube selector. I can't talk today. Um, so right now in the position that it's in, straight up, I have the option to feed from both magazines simultaneously, meaning I can pull the trigger 15 times before anything, before I run out of ammunition, where like the KSG, you can fire seven or eight, and then you have to flick the, the tube selector to the other magazine. Now with this, I can do that. So let's say I've got buckshot loaded in one tube, birdshot in the other. I simply flick it over. Now when I flick this to the left side, it's going to feed from the right tube. If I flick this to the right side, it's going to feed from the left tube. In the middle, it feeds from both. Now, a nice thing with this is it is a very positive detent. Like, it, that, that's not going anywhere unless you really put some effort into it. So that's nice. Another wonderful thing is this guy runs with Beretta-style chokes, or uh, Beretta-style threading. So let's say you own a Beretta shotgun. It is compatible with the Beretta chokes. This specific one's got the breaching choke on there. In case I just had to blow the hinge off a door, you know, because I'm cool like that. So, now moving on. Um, I see this as a benefit. A lot of people don't. And I can understand that, but here, here's my argument to this. Is you've got this very open port where you can see exactly how much ammunition you have. Now, a lot of people say uh, that that's just a point of ingress for dirt, mud, just debris. Um, and I, I will defend the UTS for this. This is an urban shotgun. It's not something you're running out in a swamp or in the desert or in Afghanistan or the jungles like the jungles of Vietnam. Like the, the shotgun was designed primarily for law enforcement who are operating in urban situations. But that that said, let's say you you know it's right after winter. There's a bunch of sand on the road. You drop it in a pile of sand. All these points of ingress you see are points for sand and debris to get out. It doesn't it doesn't just sit in there and pile up in it. I mean it can get out. A lot of people see this strictly as a point of ingress, not as also an exit point. So I will stick up for Utosh on that. Another thing, um, we will touch this later, but you have this port cover to uh, access if in the event you have a malfunction. And then lastly, if you guys are familiar with AR-15s, you'll be pretty familiar with this gun. Uh, in terms of the grip, you get an AR-15 style fire select. Gotta love that. Now, I will show you one more positive, which is the trigger. Let me show you guys how this trigger is. Yes, this shotgun is unloaded. Okay. Now, I'm going to set the camera down for a second, and I'm going to show you guys the, the reset. Actually, yeah, I'll show you guys the reset. Sorry about that. Okay, so watch this. Right there. 
That reset is, I swear to God, shorter than a 1911. Awesome. Now, this is where it's going to get bad. And to those of you who have a Utosh and love it, uh, stop the video now. This gun overall is a very bad design. It's, it's, just, it's just bad. So let's get over it. The first thing that I hate the most is this, this dust cover. It's held by a very weak magnet. And it just, it just dangles. You guys like that? Me and my friends who own these, we're going to start a band called Utosh. It's just not, that's, that's the stupidest thing. They, whoever designed that needs to go away. Um, another really bad thing. Now, I don't know what they were thinking when they designed this, but whoever thought this up needs to be shot with this shotgun just to add insult to injury. Is the action release button. Right there. It is, now, right now it's down because the action's open. There we go. It's flush. You see how my finger doesn't catch anything? It is completely flush with the the base of the stock. Like, it, it doesn't make any sense. And it's a button behind you. So you have to push that in order to release your action or pull the trigger. And, like, the, the, there's no sense to that. It doesn't make sense to me. So, bad call, Utosh. Uh, next up, in terms of bad, is uh, reloading. So the inside of this, you have to flip these covers open, which I don't mind, that doesn't bug me. It's this right here. You have to push this plunger forward before you can even load a shell. So you're basically loading a dead shell, then loading your ammunition before you can even get going. Um, and inside here, this is sharp in here. Like some of these parts, when you're loading these shells, numerous times, as you can see, I've got scars. I've cut my fingers trying to, to load this shotgun. Um, and the worst part is trying to top it off. So when let's say this gun's loaded and you've closed this port, the plunger is pushing in on it. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna the plunger you can see is pushing in on it. So let's say this is another shell. I have to in order to top this off after say firing five or six rounds, I have to yeah. I have to push that shell forward. Then I have to push this one forward. Then I can start topping it off. And that crap. And that doesn't make sense to me. That's that's just a poor design idea. So. Topping it off, not so much. Now, some people are gonna, I, I, I hear this a lot actually, they, they do complain about the reload, say like, you know, what if a guy breaks into my home and I run out of ammunition? Uh, m my response to that is if you, you fire 15 rounds of let's say double up buck at a home intruder and that didn't solve your problem, get the fuck out of there. Cause I mean, either you can't shoot for shit or something's really wrong. So, so that's all I have to say to that. Like, Generally speaking, home defense, four rounds should cut it, in my opinion. Now, some people disagree. That's 100% okay. Now, some people do own this gun, and they have no issues with it whatsoever. And honestly, I wish I could say the same. Being a Gen 2, this one, it was plagued with issues. The start was just jamming. I, I couldn't get through 15 rounds without the gun malfunctioning or having a failure to feed or failure to extract. Next up is once that happened to me... At about 800 rounds in, the barrel snapped off. It actually, when I fired, I was using a slug, and it blew up. And this whole action part almost came up and hit me in the head. The only reason it didn't is because the dust cover, or the cover was holding the back of the shotgun in place. So it did suffer a catastrophic malfunction. It has since been fixed. But now, the issue that I'm having, at the 2,000 round mark, is there's a little lip. Right there. You can kind of see where it's a little shiny backed out from the barrel and now the left side magazine the shell gets hung up right there so the left side magazine on this shotgun is completely inoperable now i've thought about filing it down but i i don't want to what a pain in the ass so at this point this is a, a standard seven round shotgun i the right side magazine works flawless left side not so much and then you come up with the issue of short stroking uh, it's very easy to short stroke this shotgun. Very easy. You need to be very firm with that shotgun when you're racking the action. Like, you need to... It looked like I'm masturbating there, but I'm not. I swear to God. You, you really have to be firm with that action. So I, I really don't like that. And uh, I actually called Utosh about this because their, their manual is useless. And I, I, like, I was curious more than anything is what kind of maintenance you need to do on this. Because you figure with a shotgun, it's... 
pretty self-sufficient. I mean, shotguns are pretty robust. They say that this gun, in terms of lubrication, and this is from Utosh, this gun needs to be lubricated as much, if not more than, an AR-15. What in the unholy hell did they create a pump-action shotgun that needs as much care, or if not more than, uh, an AR-15? So, I I'm going to be honest, uh, in my opinion, like j just with the, the pluses and negatives of this shotgun, for the price of it, if you're thinking about buying one, do not. It's not... If this was a $700 shotgun, I'd probably buy it. But at the price they are right now at $1,100, $1,200 plus, you could buy four 870s that are going to last and work a lot better than this guy will. Uh, I'm trying to say, what's the best way I can put this? This shotgun is a movie shotgun. It's something that looks cool. You put it in the movies, it's all weird and alien-like. But I think that's where this gun belongs, is in the novelty department. This is not a shotgun I personally feel that anybody can trust their life with. Because, uh, like, under stress, issues like that, there's no real texturing on this other than these two. It's very easy to miss when you're stroking the shotgun to just lose grip of it, especially if you've got sweaty hands. You'll lose grip of the shotgun, and then you have to re-rack it. And by doing that, you can actually potentially jam it to the point where, if you're in a, a situation, life or death situation, you... You, you've died. You're dead. That's why you keep a quality backup sidearm right there. Um, overall, m my opinion on this shotgun, great idea, terrible execution. Now, there's rumors that Utosh is producing a semi-automatic shotgun. Um, I have to say no to that. That they need to, they need to fix this design before they do anything like that. So... Anyways, uh, I'm going to cut the video out here. I think I've complained a little bit too much. Now, please note, everybody, this is just my opinion, okay? It, 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 for those of you who have this shotgun and uh, have no issues with it, rock on. I, you have no idea how much I envy you. I wish this gun worked as good as yours did. But at this point, this, this thing sits in my safe, and it's probably going to sit there to the point where I decide if it's worthwhile to fix that lip in there. I'll either take a grinder to it or... It'd be so easy to just... Nah, no. No. That's irresponsible. Anyways, guys. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. I hope... Uh, I hope you learned something from this. I hope this at least gives you an opinion on this shotgun. But, uh, anyways. I will see you all next time.